As my lip ripping team here at Go Wild has reminded me, it has been 56 days since we had a show about fishing. They and Billy Bass have spoken. It's time to sit down and do a show about spring bass fishing. Cash Daniel is back on the show today. The University of Kentucky linebacker is best known for his tackling, but his favorite thing to actually tackle is a ditch pickle. That's right, Cash is fanatic about bass fishing. On this episode, Cash is going to share finding the bass in the spring, his favorite bass lure across each column of water, using attractants on his lures, why he loves to focus on shallow water, his rod and reel combo, and of course we're going to talk about his favorite bass lure of all time. You are hooked already, I can tell. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon so you don't miss any future shows about fishing. I have a phenomenal trout guide who's coming on here soon to talk about fly fishing and you can bet your bottom dollar that this will not be the last fishing show about Gearbox Talk in the spring. This is Gearbox Talk with Cash Daniel. I know you got a few different passions. One that everybody knows is football. Another is turkey hunting. And today we're going to talk about some bass fishing. Are you ready, man? Absolutely. I can always talk some bass fishing, baby. <laughs> All right, man. Let's dive into it. Uh, how do you choose a good spot to, for spring bass fishing? So for me, um, usually, and it, and it starts in the early spring, I like to get out there, you know, right when the winter's ending and it's just the transition season. Um, typically because it'll set me up for the year of patterning out these fish. And the first thing I like to look for, especially if we've had like a lot of rain or like in this instance, and we're having a lot of snow melt off back home in the mountains, a lot of freshwater run-ins is where you're going to find a lot of good fish because a lot of, a lot of places back home in Eastern Kentucky and Central Kentucky, I think in Kentucky in general, there's only two, uh, two power source lakes and that's Kentucky Lake and Barkley. The other ones are, you know, rain and natural run-ins, maybe a creek runs in it or two, but there's not a whole lot of natural flowing water. And so when this water, this new water comes comes in off these mountains, that fresh rain, that fresh snow that's melting off, you know, a lot of times those fish, for some reason, they'll stack up up against those rocks and find that new fresh water to breathe. And you can take a crankbait or, you know, a, a spinnerbait or a chatterbait and run through there. And a lot of times that's where you're going to get, you're going to get bit. But for me and how I like to just pick a spot, is first off, you got to know what style of fisherman that you are. You got to know, are you a shallow water fisherman that likes to flip and crank that gets in the real nitty gritty stuff? Or are you a guy that likes to sit out there in the open water and look at your graph and find um, points and find ledges and throw a deep diving crankbait? Or are you a finesse fisherman out there with a, a you know, a Senko or a, a drop shot? So you got to know what style of fisherman you are first before when you know you're going to pick out a spot. And so for me, and this is just how I do it. I mean, you could be a totally different fisherman, but if you fish or think how like I do, for me, I like to fish shallow water and I like a little color to it, dirty. I don't like fishing clean, clear water. I'll have to, I'll, I'll fish it if I have to, but my preference is that little color, little stain to chocolate milk. And just because I feel like with the style that I fish of flipping jigs and uh, throwing square bill crankbaits around rock and wood and bushes, I think that just plays better into my into uh, my arsenal of what I throw and how I fish. So, for me, it's finding that dirty water with those with rocks, with stumps, with trees and wood, anything that that sun can get high on and get and get a lot of heat down on because those fish are coming out of a you know a really cold winter, so they're going to push up eating for shad. But look for flat sided rocks. Flat sided rocks heat up really really fast, and those fish, especially in dirty water. They'll move up on top of those rocks. You can flip a jig right on top of its head and pull you out about a four pounder. That's one thing I love about fishing shallow and dirty waters that you can get on top of them. If you have a, tro a quiet trolling motor and if you're quiet and not beating, banging around in there in the boat, you ain't got to make a, a 10 foot pitch. You can get right up on top of his head and flip right in there and jerk him out. So that's how I like to set up and look for a spot is that really got a lot of vegetation and a lot of, you know, presentation for me to know that, Hey, I can throw a, a crankbait here, I can flip that bush, I could run a chatterbait along this tree, you know, just something in that, that clicks in my mind where I know fish is going to be. I was going to ask you about, you know, kind of how you move through each column of water, but let's start in the shallow and talk about specifically what you're using, if you could show off some of your lures here, and yeah. then we'll, we'll so, move through the other options. 
So the first thing I'm picking up and looking for is your standard, is your standard flipping jig here. Now this is, uh, I, I don't even know if they make these anymore. These are my dad's old jigs that I throw out of his box. So shout out to dad. Uh, he calls this color the Taylorsville Crawl color. I don't know if you guys can there see it real good, yeah. but it's got a, a root beer tail or a trailer to it. It's black brown with uh, and the black skirt part has red flakes on it. It's got a little gold to it. So this is a, a bait that you fish in dirty water. So this is obviously why I got it out because nine times out of ten, if I'm flipping, it's going to be dirty water. Um, and this rattle in it too. Got to have that rattle. I think especially in dirty water when you're flipping and to help that fish locate your bait a lot better if you were to want, if you were to be flipping in there without a rattle to it, uh, especially when the water's cold. Now, if I'm flipping dirty water that surrounds, it's 65 degrees or warmer, I'm not going to flip a rattle in there. You know, I'm just going to let the jig do its work. But especially in the cold, in the cold water areas, uh, anytime you're fishing high 40s to, to high 50s, I'm, I'm flipping a jig with a rattle. Then uh, another one here is your standard square bill crankbait. Now this is a Spro Little John. Now this color right here, the reason why I picked this crankbait is because this time of year right now in early spring, this red crawl color is absolutely killer. Anywhere you go, it could be in dirty water, clear water, stained water. For some reason, this red and orange uh, has a really good, has a really good uh, catch ratio to it. Especially, you know, when you look at it and the fact that when these fish are coming up from, you know, being, if, if you're fishing a lake, if you're fishing a lake where they have a place to go deep, if they can come up and start feeding in the shallow, shallow water, they're looking for crawdad, shad, you're trying to match the hatch is basically what you're trying to do. And so anytime you're doing that, you got to match the hatch with your crawdads and then uh, we're, we're still in shallow water. If I'll get to the DT6. <laughs> but, um, and then once you get into out of the cold cold winter months and the early spring, uh, this is another standard square bill crankbait. It's a flat sided crankbait, especially in this cold water situation. You want a crankbait that tights, that's got a tight wobble to it. You don't want a big swooping wobble to it. Something tight, something giving off that constant vibration for those fish to allow to come up and locate your bait. Uh, so basically that's about, that's about all I'm throwing, except for maybe a, I'll throw a, uh, maybe a, a standard chatter bait. Uh, here every once in a while, but mainly my bread and butter is flipping a jig and throwing a square bill flat side of crankbait anytime yep. I'm in shallow water. And I know, I know you tend to stick shallow, but let's talk about if you do kind of venture out into that mid to deep, you know, is there something that you do to change it? I'm sure you change up your game a little bit. What do you shift to? Absolutely. So I've switched it up. If I'm fishing anywhere between eight to 12 foot, um, I like to throw my Rapala DT6 right here, and I got it in the, the red crawl color. I've got it in the sexy shad color. I've got it in the pearl color. I like throwing these DT6, especially when I go up in the north, like at Lake Erie in the spring, on their on their spring, in their pre-spawn bite, uh, especially in that perch color. I can remember two years ago going up there and fit, and thinking, man, I'm, I'm going to have to go out there and fish, you know, 20-foot water with a spinning rod in my hand. I'm not going to have any fun. It's going to be stupid. Go up there and we're fishing just like we would for largemouth, going around these islands, uh, targeting islands with heavy rock on it and transition rock where we go from like big chunk, 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 and then we go down a little pea gravel chunk right there and they go back up to big chunk. Hmm. Those transitions in that gravel, when we get that DT6 down there and bounce it off that bottom, it was almost every other cast. Sling it out there, crank, bounce off one rock, bounce off two rocks. Feels like somebody took a baseball bat and hit it with it, and then you got to buy it. Hmm. And so, but the reason I can get this thing so deep for me, because a lot of guys, they like to throw, they like to crank with 12 pound mono or 12 pound fluorocarbon. For me, if I'm fishing these flat side of crankbaits, this typically dives about three to five feet. If you throw it on about 12 pound fluorocarbon for me, sometimes I'll get, I'll get sticky with it. And I'll go down to eight, maybe eight pound cigar red label, just because and this isn't an ad for Seaguard. It's got a really, really strong line to where I can throw uh, a half ounce crankbait on there on eight pound test and get maybe get a foot and a half, two foot more out of it. Because if I can grind that crankbait against the bottom, bounce it off a rock, bounce it off a log, you know, especially in the early springtime, I'm going to get a reaction strike out of that. So it's all about what you're fishing with your line as well. You know, your whole setup, your rod and reel setup, your gear ratio setup. Um, so everything, it's almost like golf, you know, some people ask me all the time, or like, why do you have so many rods for? I'm like, well, why does a golfer have so many clubs in his bag? Cause each one's different for different <laughs> situations. It's like fishing. So, right. That's, that's why it. 
Yeah, no, I think that's really good. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you about was if you're using attractants on your lures, and if, if so, what's your approach to that? So uh, I will use a uh, some from time to time, not a whole lot, but uh, if, if the bite seems stagnant or um, if I'm missing a lot of bites, especially if I'm missing a lot of bites, I want to give it to something for that fish to hold on to more. Uh, so I'll take my jig here. And it comes in a little spray can and it's called bang. You can get it at Walmart or any other, you know, uh, retail outdoor show or outdoor shops. And it's just got a garlic flavor to it. And I think that when those fish inhale it and they taste it a little bit, I think it's like, well, it's different for a second. Hold on. I don't want to spit this back out. And that one tenth of a second, you know, on my hook set can be the difference between, you know, landing that five pounder and missing that five pounder. So uh, I don't spray it on my crankbaits. I don't spray it on my, uh, anything that I'm that's if it's not flipping, I'm only spraying on my flipping baits. So, uh, my jigs and my Texas rigs and soft plastics like that. So, uh, if it's got a, if it's a spinner bait or a chatter bait or crank bait or anything else, no attracting on it whatsoever. The, the, the nice thing about that is too, if you've been fishing for a few days and you're tired of eating the same old sandwich, you can just put a little bit of that garlic spray on there and liven things up. It's, but the thing about it is though, is that it's like that, it's like that one bottle of cologne you have that if you spray it right directly on it, it's too strong. So you got to like spray it and then like, fan it through it. if you're going to do, do that for the sandwich, yeah, you're going to have to spray it out and then bring the bread. And like spot through it. Uh, everyone has a nice mental image of you on a boat doing that. Now you're going to be tempted to try that now. Now that I've mentioned it next time you're fishing with that stuff. I've accidentally tasted it one time spraying it. And the wind coming back at me, I'm talking to my buddy. It burns. It didn't taste like burn. It burns. <laughs> That's funny, man. Uh, let's talk a little bit about your rod and reel combo. You kind of led into that on that last question. Um, what are you using typically in the springtime? So if I'm fishing around here, uh, like back home or uh, any lake that that fishes like a typical lake in the southeast region, so anywhere from East Kentucky to uh, Gunnersville to Chickamauga to Kentucky Lake. If I'm shallow water cranking, I like a seven foot to seven one, uh, medium heavy with an extra fast tip. That extra fast tip on there, uh, when I set the hook, I have a really good backbone at the base of the at the base of the rod with the medium heavy setting. It's got a good backbone to be able to pull that fish out of any kind of you know maybe if it's, if I hook it on a rock, if I hook it on a you know a tree, I have the backbone to get it out of there and allow my allow my reel to kind of take over with it. But with that extra fast tip, you know, it'll also allows me to swing my hook set and not have to worry about it. Cause a lot of people, like when you're cranking, you people still set the hook like you, like you would like a chatterbait fish or mm -hmm. a jig fish. You just got to swing into it, be easy with it. You know, you're cranking, you're cranking, you're cranking, and all of a sudden just sway back into it. What that does is that, that the extra fast tip comes into play is that it allows that tip to bend a lot more than let's say a regular a uh, fast action wood or a uh, medium action wood. And it allows that fish to hold on to that crankbait more and it's not jerking out of its mouth. It's allowing that fish to fully absorb the bait as you're setting the hook without prying it out of its mm -hmm. jaw. So that extra fast tip for me, especially when I start swinging, um, a lot of times too in the spring in this cold water situation is when you're flat side for crankbait fish and a lot of fish are just going to swipe at the bait and not really fully like try to inhale it. And so when you get that initial swipe and you get one hook in there, maybe, and you get that nice lean and sweep to it. And that extra fast tip allows that rod to bend and give more to that crankbait with that fluorocarbon line because fluorocarbon doesn't stretch. It's kind of replacing the line in an aspect because a lot of people say they fish mono because it gives that stretch. So it doesn't pull the crankbait out of the fish's mouth. Well, I don't like fishing mono. I don't like how it floats. I like how just how fluorocarbon feels and how I feel with it when I when I crank and when I flip. So I'm allowing my rod tip and my gear to take over so more than the line would. Um, usually fishing that on a uh, five to six five six to one gear ratio or six eight to one. Nothing over seven. Um, I think anywhere between the five six to one is where you could steadily crank, and I think it's about as natural as uh, it's about as natural speed on the spool as it is when you're cranking. So I think that you're in, you can, you can control the speed rather than you having to learn the gear ratio and having the gear control you, you can control the gear ratio at five, six to one. 
So that's where I find my most success because I can speed it up if I want to and know exactly how fast the bait's going. I can steady retrieve it and know how fast it's going. And I could also slow crank it and also know how fast it's going. So five, six to one to six, four to one, six, eight to one. You know, that's my tip with my ball range where I'm standing there for a bait. Yeah, it's a really good explanation on, on all of that. Um, and I appreciate that. What brands do you lean towards on your rod reel combo? So right now I'm partnered up with, uh, with 13 Fishing. Uh, they're a really great company made here in the USA. Um, and, um, man, there's one thing that I will say about them is that they put out really quality products. I mean, it's, it's products that I know that I can go out and beat bang around, uh, and test their durability and know that, uh, when I come back and pick, pick that rod, rod and reel up again, it's not going to have any chips to it. I'm not going to have a broken eyelid or, uh, my reel's not going to mess up, but I mean, I'm not going to sit out there and say that I'm just not throwing it around or anything, but. It's uh, it's a pretty durable pretty durable gear and it gets the job done for sure. And you're seeing a lot of guys on the pro tour start to venture their way over to that side as well. Cool. And then uh, last question here, man. What what is your favorite all time bass lure for this time of year? The jig. I don't know where I put it at, but I mean, <laughs> this right here is my favorite bait of all time. Spring, summer, winter. If if you can give me a jig, I'm, I mean. I may not catch them all, but the ones I catch are going to be pretty good ones. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Well, thanks for coming on. This was a, a really fun show. I thought you did a great job of talking through all of your strategy, and I, I really do appreciate your rod and reel combo explanation. I think for somebody that's trying to figure out what they should buy, you gave a lot to think about there. So, Cash, thanks, man. This was great. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thank you, Cash. I like to mix in a good amount of people who are just absolutely the best in the world at what they do, like Jack Carr. And I like to get guys like Cash who people know, but they may not know about their outdoor obsession. Now, if you enjoyed this show, obviously you need to subscribe, but make sure you check out my other episodes too. I've talked to professional anglers John Hunter and Dean Rojas. I've got Kentucky Bass Fishing Champion Steven Taylor was a great episode. And I've got a host of other shows about fishing. They're all super interesting. You can find that by going to the Gearbox Talk playlist on our YouTube page. Drop a comment and let us know if you disagree or agree with any of Cash his lure tactics or his, his gear and let us know what you'd like to see in our next interview about fishing that's it for me today i'm out